COO, he always knows, he's like, Chase, you always get off topic. So now he puts me on a timer. <laughs> I put myself on a timer, 45 minutes, and we'll be good. So, hey guys, I'm Chase Beach. Um, about me, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, born and raised. Unfortunately, a Bengals fan, so. Yeah? Uh, I frat brigaded with, I still can't spell very well, so. You never, you never, uh, never graduate, I guess. Um, in 2015, and my degree, I had a bachelor's in administration with a concentration in entrepreneurship. Is that right? Um, so I came to Wittenberg to play lacrosse, um, played lacrosse for two years, realized I really wasn't that good, and my friends were a lot better than me, so I retired to do other things. Um, I was part of Fiji fraternity, uh, Fischenberg, is Fischenberg still around? Anyone fish? A little bit, okay. I'm going to try really hard to get like crowd engagement interactions, but if you don't want to do anything, I'll just I'll keep talking. Um, with entrepreneurs, uh, did some pretty cool stuff with uh, Dr. Kaplan and a couple of people. And uh, also uh, the manager for uh, the famous yeah. Gino and the Dirty Milk Boys, the cover yeah. bands. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. I was the promoter. Uh, so yeah, so graduated two years ago. Um, so before I kind of get into my talk, um, I want everyone, everyone stand up. Everyone get out of their seats. And for five minutes, I want you to talk to three people who you've never met. Introduce yourself and say why you're in this thing or take a minute. Right, so what, what would we just do? We just introduce ourselves to people we've never met before and said, you know, where we're from, why we're business majors. I mean, basically, we just kind of told our story, right? And that's what I've learned, you know, from Whitford and my experiences, all about just telling your story. Everyone has a story. Everyone has a cool story. You just gotta find ways to tell your story. And also you gotta be okay with kind of being a little uncomfortable and walking up to somebody and saying, Hi, you know, how are you doing? You know, I have to do it, you know, every single day for my job. I have to call people and I have to convince them to buy something they've never heard about and that's never been sold before. It's brand new technology. So you gotta step out of your comfort zone. But once you kind of step out, you're just like, okay. That's not that bad. So what I want to talk about, talk about a little bit about my story. Um, you know, Wittenberg, what Wittenberg means to me, different things I've done, um, and what I use to help me tell my story. There's like tools, right? Like I, I brought my golf clubs because I'm playing golf with my parents tomorrow. They're a lot better than me, but I'm going to try anyways. But you know, you don't go out on the golf course and just have one club, right? You got your driver, seven iron, maybe a sand wedge because you need different tools to help you play the game. And if you're really good, you have caddies. That's like the ultimate, you gotta find a cat. So I know that like, you know, I was in college once and you know, no one wants to like raise their hand and ask questions. So if you don't want to ask questions, you can text me. So my number's right there, you know, if, you know, at any time. If you have a question, just text me, and we'll talk about it. This is also my work phone, so don't like, call me late night after McMurray's and you know, ask me to buy you a pizza, because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay, so uh, what I do, I work for a company called Sudex. Uh, so it's a robotics startup, exoskeleton robotics. So you have robotics, like fully automated you know, robots that do everything, and then you, know, you have humans. And in the middle is wearable robotics, and that's you know, exoskeleton, is what we call it. Um, so it's a startup out of Cal Berkeley. Um, so if you see this picture right here, um, this is what we call the Phoenix, and this is our uh, medical exoskeleton. So I'll play a video. Uh, we actually won, a, won an award back in February uh, for the UAE Robotics for Good Challenge. There was 624 entrants, and Made it down to about 22, and then we ended up winning the competition. We beat out MIT, which all the people in my company were all excited about. Go so watch this video. So I'm Michael McKinley. Uh, we're at Sudex in Berkeley, California. 
and we develop all sorts of assistive medical devices to help people with gait disorders. So the Phoenix is a, a lightweight robotic exoskeleton that's designed to be modular so we can help people with different mobility disorders. And it's designed to uh, work with the patient as opposed to simply uh, moving their, their legs through a range of motion. So we've been developing the original Phoenix device specifically for individuals with spinal cord injury. And what we're seeing is that the same technology can be uh, used to benefit people with a very broad range of disorders. Um, and recently we've started working with people with uh, cerebral palsy. And specifically, we'd like to use uh, this award to develop suits that uh, fit the requirements of a really young um, patient, a, a young person with cerebral palsy. And that's a whole new set of challenges that, that nobody in the world of exoskeletons has been able to address yet. So we're excited to see that the, the Phoenix can be used in this, uh, this new area. And uh, we'd like to push the company um, with the financial assistance of this award uh, to, to reach those goals. <coughs> Competitions like AI and robotics for good are, are excellent for a number of reasons. First of all, it brings awareness to these new technologies that are coming out, and it, it allows us to have a, a showcase for what cool things that we're creating on a daily basis. And secondly, it's really important to get funding into these areas. It's, it's very difficult to, to get the funding that you need to make things happen, especially in the world of hardware. Um, so the second guy walking in the video, Steve, he's paralyzed from the waist down. 12 years ago, he got in a BMX accident. Um, so paralyzed from the waist down, he comes into our office in his wheelchair. He puts on basically orthopedic legs with a camelback backpack with a computer and battery. He's able to stand up and walk. Um, so it's just absolutely amazing technology. Like that, there's just so much great technology out there. And since you know we have these, you know you can, you can find them. You just gotta find the right ways to you know look. Um, so we have a whole another segment of the company. Uh, it's called Max. It's modular agile exoskeleton, um, and that's like an industrial exoskeleton for uh, working with people like UPS, FedEx. You know basically. boxes and different things like that. Um, so I was brought on in January. Um, so I'm the only non-engineer at the company. Um, so I work with about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight PhDs in mechanical engineering and physics. So you know what I so what I do at the company is um, you know, sales. Um, if you go to www.sudex.com, I'm the web admin, uh, marketing, PR, and also part-time psychologist trying to deal with the team of engineers. Um, so kind of got thrown in the fire um, in January, but um, kind of that's like you know what we just talked about, you know, getting outside your comfort zone. And you know when you get outside your comfort zone, you can really learn just a lot. Um, but it's not going to be easy. So kind of how, you know, how did some kid from Cincinnati who is a decent student at Wittenberg end up in San Francisco <coughs> working for a startup with eight PhDs? Um, you know, I'm not a genius or anything. You know, there's just a couple tools that people showed me that I've been able to use. So I'm going to share them with you. So how I kind of got there, um, originally, um, after my sophomore year of college, I went to Dr. Kaplan's office, and I was like, Dr. Kaplan, I want to move to San Francisco. I want to work for a startup. That's just something that I always wanted to do. I just wanted to do that. 
So I told him that, and he said, well, Chase, you've never been to California, you don't know anyone, and you know, you've never worked for a startup. And I was like, okay, no problem. And so what I did was I got on LinkedIn. So that's like number one tool. That's like your driver. Like if we're looking at the golf bag, your driver is LinkedIn. There's so many people that you can access. I think, it, I'll, I'll show you later, there's like 17,000 Winford alumni on LinkedIn. Um, so what I did is I got in contact with this guy named Brian Herzog, and he introduced me to a man named Matt Shapiro, who runs People Connect staff. Um, so basically, for the summer, um, you know, I ran pitch events. Uh, startups go and they you know, pitch ideas to venture capitalists, and it's like a panel session. And so I would go around San Francisco as a 20-year-old and you know, try to figure out companies to come present. Um, and then housing, so I'd never been to California before, so I just became a member of Fiji. And so what I did was I called up Cal Berkeley, and I didn't even realize that Cal and Berkeley were the same school. I thought they were different schools. So I figured that out um, and ended up living um, not at the Fiji house, because they were full. I lived at the ATO house. Um, and because of that, I made a lot of really good friends, um, and a cow, one of my cow friends actually got me my first job. Um, so it's all you know, kind of interwoven, though, between you know, Whitaker. So the summer after that, uh, I worked for a company called Border Brands, and I actually got the internship through an essay um, that I read, wrote for the business department. Um, they gave out you know, like two <coughs> internships, so it was myself and another girl. Uh, so once again, you know, through Wittenberg, through the Wittenberg, you know, business department, as well as networking, I was able to get this really sweet internship in Boulder, Colorado. If you guys never been to Boulder, I would go. It's great. Um, so there I just like ran Facebook, did social media, you know, different stuff like that. So, so that was after my junior year. So I graduated school in 2015. And through my friend at the ATO house, the, so back to the ATO house I got through the Wittenberg Fiji connection, got me my first job at Open DNS. I was like, okay, it's great. You know, March is my senior year, I have a job in San Francisco, this is awesome. Type in housing in San Francisco. Look, look and I find it's the number one most competitive housing market in the, the world. I was like, oh great, I don't have any money what am I going to do? And so, you know, I told my friends, you know, my fraternity brothers and everyone, I was like, yeah, I got a job in San Francisco, I'm looking for housing. And one of my fraternity brothers, who's actually sitting right here, Derek, he reached out to me and he was just like, hey Chase, my aunt and uncle, Rob and Mary Beth, they live in San Francisco, they've never had kids, you should talk to them. And I was like, sure, that sounds good. So I ended up talking to Rob and Mary Beth and they are like, okay, you know, you guys, you can live with me for the summer. And I was like, perfect. Get on my feet. You know, this is going to be great. You know, I didn't have to pay any rent. I was, like, they changed my life. Um, you know, and, and part of it came from, you know, I, was, I told my story. Like, I told Rob Mary Beth, like, this is what I was doing. This is why, you know, I'm you know, coming out to San Francisco. And it's like, if you establish, like, that connection with someone, like, they're willing to help you. You know, if you kind of, you know, having like you pass on to others, you know, as a school slogan. So if you kind of like put yourself out there, people are going to do things for you. So that's, so that's Rob and Mary Beth. Uh, Rob's on the left, Mary Beth next to him. And then the tall blonde dude in the middle, uh, he's actually a Winberg graduate. Uh, so his name's Travis Bordine. Um, so last summer, right before I was leaving, to go to San Francisco, uh, one of my fraternity brothers got married, and it was actually at the chapel at Windsor. And I saw Travis at the wedding, first time I talked to him in you know, a year and a half, probably. And we got to talking, and he was like, you know, well, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm going to San Francisco. It's the greatest place in the world. Like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm working in Milwaukee, but I don't really know what I'm, you know, I'm doing. And I was like, you should come out to San Francisco. You should do it. And he's like, Chase, you've never really lived there before. I was like, oh, it doesn't matter. You should do it. And he's like, he's like, okay. And so he was willing to step out of his comfort zone. 
like he, you know, he's from Wisconsin, you know, he's more of like, you know, a good old boy, you know, never lived in a big city, but he was able to step outside of his comfort zone, wasn't, you know, wasn't afraid to do it, and now uh, he actually ended up living with myself and Robin Mary Beth. Uh, so Mary Beth actually, she drives a Toyota Highlander, and she has a, a Wittenberg parent sticker on the back. <laughs> so, you know, kind of expanding, you know, expanding that network, but stepping outside your comfort zone. Uh, so now Travis works for uh, Hydropack, this outdoor company. Uh, so he originally came out to San Francisco without a job. He's just, I'm going to come out to, you know, San Francisco, you know, because I believe in it, because you believe in it, Chase. He got a job at a startup, and the startups, you know, they don't always go well. And he got fired. He was let go, 50% of the company was let go. And all of a sudden, he's out of the job, and he lives in the most, you know, expensive housing market in the world. But, you know, and, and I remember like going home that day, because we lived together, we have an apartment now, not with our fake godparents. Um, but I, I came home and I was just like, I thought he was gonna be all sad and crying and have a huge bottle of wine. But I come home and he was just on his laptop looking for jobs. And he was just like, you know, like, it sucks. Like, I can't help that I got fired, like maybe a little bit, but you know, he wasn't afraid to fail. Like, everyone's gonna fail. I fail all the time. I get yelled at by my seat. He's probably gonna call me right now and say, where are you? You're supposed to be in California. You know, like, so things happen. But he believes in what he's doing. He ended up finding a green job. He works at Hydropack, which is this, like outdoor water bottle company. They like make a collapsible water bottle. It's, in, it's really cool. Um, and he was always an outdoors guy. So he started, he came out to San Francisco, you know, he didn't have like, his ideal job, but he kept trying things out, and now, you know, couldn't be happier. So, right, so, you know, telling your story, so, you know, let's talk about the actual tools. You know, I said LinkedIn is the driver. So who, who here does not have LinkedIn? Okay, that's all right. Next week though, I want you guys, who, I, I can't keep track of all of you, maybe I can find out who you guys are, but I want you guys to get a LinkedIn and I'll be your first connection and we'll, we'll talk, we'll chat, we'll chat over here. <coughs> I'm telling you, LinkedIn is amazing. I use LinkedIn for business every single day. It's like the adult version of Facebook without like your parents posting weird stuff about like your dog and stuff. <laughs> So my favorite thing to do with LinkedIn, like, you know, if some if a Winberg student asks me, he's like, Chase, what should I do? I said, get on LinkedIn. And what I do is I show him.
That's ridiculous. I've never been to the Netherlands, but if I wanted to go, I bet I could find some friends. And it's simple. All you know, all you have to do is just, you know, I want to go to, you know, greater New York City area. And now it's gonna filter and it's gonna show all the people who graduated in the years they graduated. So like, we'll go, to, we'll go to Chris Chat. <laughs> That's it. Let's see what Chris is up to. See you like 99% of you guys have Twitter, and you think of it as like, oh, it's like a funny way to find, you know, gifs, you know, and like to book for, make fun of my friends. And yeah, you can do it that way, but you can also use it as a great networking tool. Um, so, for example, I was at uh, the Associated General Contractors Technology Forum last week, and there was this keynote speaker, his name's James Bedman. He gave this really cool talk on, you know, brand new technology, you know, for construction. And my company, you know, being in the construction market with exoskeletons, you know, I was like, great, like, how am I going to get hold of him? You know, everyone uses email, you know. So, okay, I looked him up on Twitter. So I said, Great meeting you yesterday at the AGC California Tech Forum. And he said, at Chase, same here. And he ended up sending me a message later saying, hey Chase, this is really interesting. I actually have a construction podcast and I'd love for your CEO to be on it. And just like that, using Twitter, where I normally use to you know, look up you know, pictures from the Cincinnati Bengals game, I now use to expand my professional network. So there's so many different ways you can do it. Family and friends, that's another one. So when, if you go and like start your own company, like the first thing you do is go to your family and friends and you know, ask for money. And that's the same thing that you can do with your network. You know, I have you know, a lot of friends like through school. Uh, my friend Lewis Thompson, who graduated two years ago. His dad is, works at Octagon. He's come and spoke here before. He's a really like, genius marketer. And I reached out to him a couple months ago. I was like, hey, Mr. T, like, I'm doing some marketing right now. I have no clue what I'm doing. And he's like, that's OK, Chase. No one really does. You know, here are a couple things that you can do. So using my friend's dad, I saved months and months of time. And your friends and your family also know, you know, they know you well. You, you should be honest. You, know, you should ask them, like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? You know, mom and dad, like, I maybe want to go to Anchorage, Alaska and be a fishboat captain. Like, will you help me? I'd probably say no. 
But another thing that you know I want to harp on is like asking questions, getting out of your comfort zone, like being okay with you know maybe they're going to say no, you know maybe they're going to say Chase you're crazy. But if you keep going and keep getting outside your comfort zone, you're, you're eventually you know it's going to be the norm. Wittenberg, right here, has unbelievable resources. If you go to the Career Center, there are people that are hired, paid money to help you with your resume, to help you network. I, uh, I work for Fastenal, uh, which is right down the road. Got paid $10 an hour and also got a couple credits. You know, there's so many opportunities right here. You just kind of got to get outside your comfort zone because it's, it's not comfortable going to someone as a 20-year-old and saying, hey, I know I'm in college, but can you help me with my resume? But I guarantee you that you'll walk out that door feeling comfortable. You know, the business department. You know, Dr. Gradwell was telling me, unfortunately, I'm not coming back uh, for homecoming, but if I was, I would go to this. If I was a student, I would go to this. You know, it's a, you can't see it because it's not that big, but it's a networking opportunity, and there's actually Wittenberg alumni who <coughs> come back and talk about their, you know, their time at Wittenberg. You know, these people are successful, you know, business people. Dr. Gradwell told me yesterday, I was on the phone with her, she said that Wittenberg got ranked in the top 10 for businesses for median salaries of middle-aged people out of like all the schools in the world. Like, that's great. And, you know, having might be passed on to others. Like, these people want to help you. You know, everyone wants to go back to college. You know, I, you know, I feel like I'm here and it's like, oh, I wish I was you guys because you guys have such a great opportunity and so many great resources. Yeah. Also, the, your professors, they're in like, the, they graduated from like the 20th grade. One of the engineers that I work with, he, uh, he's finishing up his last PhD class. And I was kind of like giving him crap. He's like, yeah, well, I'm about to graduate the 20th grade. So, you know, these people are smart, you know, and they leave their doors open. You know, I work with, those, you know, I tried working with professors at Cal because our, you know, my startup came out of Cal. And I like went to the you know business professor of entrepreneurship. Like, hey, like I'm doing this robotic startup and it's out of Cal. Like, can you help me? And he said, talk to my TA. You know, they actually have students teach their classes. They don't even teach their classes. You guys have people who have PhDs who are there every day, who have office hours that you can go by. You just gotta step outside your comfort zone. You know, ask questions. Another thing. You know, campus activities. You know, how I, how I got my job at Border Brands. You know, I wrote like an okay essay, but I really believe like why they chose me was because of Fischenberg. I helped start one of my friends, you know, fishing club. He was like, I want to do a fishing club. Now I'm going to start this. It's called Fischenberg. I'm like, that's awesome. I suck at fishing, but I want to get good at fishing. And so, you know, we started this club and I just got like, so wrapped up into it because it was like something you know it was like something new to me it's outside my comfort zone but i learned to love it and if you're passionate about something like you can talk to anybody about it because people want to talk to people who are passionate about things you know fraternity sorority clubs i mean all this different stuff i mean without my fraternity i would have never you know got out to san francisco i've got housing you know without my fraternity i would have never <coughs> talked to travis and Maybe he wouldn't, you know, be out in San Francisco. So, but it's, you know, stepping outside your comfort zone. Check my time. All right, good. It's all right, so, you know, we started with, you know, telling, talking about stories. You know, everyone has a story. Everyone's come from somewhere. Everyone wants to go somewhere. So, you know, this is kind of, you know, if I were you, you know, this is my advice on telling a good story. You know, get better every day. You know, like who in here is an athlete or has played sports before? A lot of people, right? You know, you don't just show up, you know, on game day, you're just like, I'm ready to go. Like I tried doing CrossFit like a couple months ago and I like did not stretch or anything. I tried doing this class and I like was like limping out of the CrossFit gym because you have to get warmed up. You want to go zero to one hundred, and one is better than zero. Like you know, some people ask me you know networking advice. Like Chase, like 
you know, what should I do to network? And after I say, get on LinkedIn, I say, reach out to one person a day. You know, step outside your comfort zone. Reach out to just one person a day. And if you just do it for a month, you're gonna have 30 people. And you know, maybe, you know, right, getting back to the, everyone's gonna fail, maybe, you know, half get back to you if you're lucky. I reach out to probably like 100 people and I'll be like jumping for joy if two people get back to me. So if you reach out to 30 people, you know, 10% get back to you, that's three people that are now investing their time into you. But it's just every day, you know, every day you gotta, you gotta decide like, okay, I'm gonna spend 10 minutes and kind of freak myself out and like, you know, think about, you know, going to another city or think about, you know, talking to someone that I never talked to or talking to this professor who I think doesn't like me. Probably lie, because all your professors like you. <coughs> and finding something you believe in. Uh, you know, everyone says, like, you know, you know, how to find the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I, I said that, you know, I kind of, Dr. Gravel asked me to come up with a, you know, a title, and I was just like, I, I don't know what I'm going to say. Like, you know, how to BS your way through college. You know, no, I'm And I thought about it, you know, how to find the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, because everyone, you know, everyone feels lost, and everyone feels like, you know, they're never going to figure it out. But that's okay. <coughs> when you find something that you believe in, it's going to carry you, you know, through those times of uncertainty. Like for me, working at Sudex, my grandfather uh, was diagnosed with Parkinson's back in 2010. So his mobility, I've seen just like dive just so deep, and it's because, you know, he just can't move around, and he just. I remember saying, he was just like, I wish that I could get out of my wheelchair and walk. But you can't. So I found this company, you know, Sudex, that's developing this technology that could potentially help me. So like some days when, you know, I'm completely over my head and doing something that I've never done before, walking into a building that I've never walked in before, it's like, you know, I go back to like what I believe in. Getting, you know, something potentially for my grandfather or someone like my grandfather. But I think, you know, if you find something that you really love, you know, you'll wake up every day just ready to go. Right? I've said it, you know, a million gazillion times, and I'll say it again. Just get out of your comfort zone, you know? Everyone's sitting, you know, everyone's probably sitting together with their friends, and that's fine. But when you got up, and you went and you introduced someone that you didn't know, like you made a connection. Maybe you'll see them on campus and say hi, and maybe you'll end up starting a club together. Like you never know. But as soon as you get out of your comfort zone, that's when things can start to happen. Take a class you would not normally take. I know the business professors are probably mad at me when I say this, but one of the best business courses that I ever took at Wittenberg was my junior year fall, and I took acting. And I knew zero people in the class. Well, I knew one person, John Lennon. But, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, everyone knows John. So. And I, I didn't know anybody. And so I had, you know, I was working with Dr. Reynolds, who's like the man. And, you know, I had to, you know, do a 60 line, you know, play script. And I had to tell this girl that I loved her like 50 times. It was scripted, I had to say. But, you know, it was something where I wasn't comfortable with, but now, you know, business is all about interaction. This is all about talking to people and, you know, reading body language. And so that was an unbelievable business class. And I never thought it was gonna be a business class. I just took it because I thought it was gonna be an art class and I heard there wasn't any homework. So, you know, study, study abroad. Um, you know, I, Frank picked me up from the airport and, you know, we were talking and I was just like, one thing I was like, you know, I wish I, you know, studied abroad, you know. I wish I would have gotten out of my country. I just got my passport. I've never been out of the country. So like having that opportunity, Wittenberg has a great study abroad program. So it's like jumping out of your comfort zone. Join a club. Um, you know, Tiger Fund. You know, part of every part of your tuition every single year goes to this Tiger Fund. And they have money to give to students, run by students to give to students to do whatever you want. We went up steelhead fishing in Michigan on winter break my senior year and stayed in this log cabin that's owned by the bi biology department, you know, for free. So it's like find, you know, find something you believe in. If there's not a club, start one. Don't miss class. Just show up. 
I mean, seriously, you know. Unless you're on a full ride, which is D3, I mean, you could be academically, you know, but athletic, you know, I wasn't on a full ride. So every single time I didn't go to class, I was wasting money. And the majority of it was my parents' money. <coughs> so next time you think about skipping class, right, you're just like, oh, I'm too tired, or like, oh, like, this class is boring, or like, oh, I'm hungover. Just think about, like, money, right, this dollar bill. Just, you're just wasting money. It's gone. Don't skip class. That's my dollar bill, too, so I'm kind of Unbelievable campus. Like this is like a live, this is a liberal arts school. You know, this isn't you know a public school where it's, you know, it's expensive. Like for me, my parents paid a lot of money for me to go here, and there's really nice stuff here. You know, I I work with inner city kids, and like they have nothing. They live in San Francisco, and it's like they don't have anything. You guys have so much opportunity, but like once you start being thankful and like realizing what you have, you know, you're like wow. This place is awesome. I want to give back. I want to do more and more and more. And you'll get addicted to it. You'll get addicted to you know helping people or like trying to you know better yourself. You know doing something for the university, right? Because that's what it comes down to. Having light, you pass it on to others. You know I was given you know this unbelievable light. Like you know, someone reached you know took invested in me and got me a job that got me an internship, that got me housing, that got me another internship, that got me a job, and now, you know, I'm the happiest person in the world doing what I love. But if it wasn't for other people, it never would have happened. Um, it's funny because, you know, Cal Berkeley, their slogan is, let there be light. And I think ours is just so much cooler because we have the light. Like, everyone has the light. You know, everyone has a story. You just gotta pass it on. You gotta get out of your comfort zone. So that's it. So this is my contact information. Like I said, don't call me late night after McMurray's because I'm not going to get you a pizza. But if you have any questions, um, email me. You know, I'm here for talk. Yeah, so we can do some questions now if you want. I didn't get any texts.